Can ChatGPT write a final year pharmacy dissertation? So I'm going to answer this question today. I recently published an article about a year ago regarding necrotizing otitis externa. Now this article is very important because when I published this article, it was actually after 2021. Those of you who use ChatGPT will know that anything after 2021, ChatGPT does not have the knowledge base to answer those questions. So this means it cannot use my journal article to save it or help it during this writing process. So I'll show you over here, my article was published in February of 2022 and therefore it cannot be used by ChatGPT to help it or assist it in answering the question. So I said, can you write a journal article with the title, the quality of life and cost benefits of domiciliary 24 hour piperacillin tazobactam as an infusion for patients with necrotizing otitis externa. And I gave it some subheadings. So here it's put the author names because it doesn't know who to as John Doe. And it says, with regards to the abstract, Necrotizing otitis externa is a rare but serious complication of external ear infections, completely right. It typically involves hospitalizations and treatment with intravenous antibiotics, this is right as well, which can be costly and inconvenient for patients. This is a bit concerning to me because the wording of this is very similar to um, the wording of my uh, paper. So uh, this study aims to evaluate the cost, the quality of life and cost benefits of domiciliary 24 hour piperacillin tazobactam. I have not given any information of the number of patients that we're going to analyze in this study. So it's made up a total number of patients as 50 patients. And then it said that the quality of life questionnaire that it uses is going to be the SF36 questionnaire. This is not the questionnaire that we used in my journal article. We looked at the Glasgow Benefit Inventory and therefore it, I'm interested to know more about the SF36 questionnaire and we'll ask it more about it um, during this video. So it looks at this um, and then it gives you some methodology about uh, the cost was collected and analyzed to evaluate um, the infusion compared to hospitalized treatment. Now let's look at the results and the discussion for a bit more information. So the study found that domiciliary piperacillin tazobactam was a safe and effective alternative to hospital-based treatment for patients with necrotizing otitis externa. This is the same conclusion that we came up with. The quality of life assessments showed significant improvement in physical, fun physical functioning, uh, role limitations due to physical health, bodily pain and general health perceptions. Very similar parameters of what we assessed. Again, we used a different questionnaire altogether. Cost data analysis. It's not given us any figures here with regards to cost data analysis. So let's see if you can ask it. Can you include figures or prices? cost data analysis. I think it may struggle with this. It's very hard to find this information online. So while it's writing that, let's carry on reading. Um, so it looked at the quality of life um, for these patients, showed an improvement in quality of life and uh, a cost saving. So in terms of discussion, uh, the discussion was domiciliary infusion a therapy had been shown to be safe and effective. We've gone through this in the results. It provides evidence that domiciliary infusion therapy may be a viable option for the treatment of necrotizing otitis externa. The quality of life improvements and cost benefits demonstrated in this study support the use of domiciliary infusion as a viable treatment for patients with necrotizing otitis externa. Further research needs to be done in order to look at long-term efficacy and safety of domiciliary infusion therapy for this patient population. This is where I would argue that the limitation of this study for us, and it should be the case for this, is not looking at the long-term use of this treatment. This treatment is generally fairly long-term. You need to treat these patients for at least six weeks with intravenous antibiotics. 
So the main limitation with managing patients with necrotizing ultrasonic externa is the fact that it's such a rare condition and therefore your study population is often small. So to say that it will um, lead to a quality of life improvement for all patients in the UK is not an accurate statement and your limitation will be your number in a lot of these studies. If, you're, if they're saying they're looking at 50 patients, that's a limitation. We looked at 12 patients in, in an entire region and that was the, the highest number of patients that we can obtain for the trial. So that's one of the main limitations. Let's look at it giving us figures. So here it's giving us uh, figures in dollars. So you, the cost per patient was eight and a half thousand dollars. Hospital ba based treatment was twelve thousand um, dollars. Let's see. Can you give the prices in pounds for the UK? Let's see if it gives different UK based prices. If it gives these same figures, um, I think these are far away from the figures that we uh, provided and identified in our study. Um, but yeah, so roughly it's saying that these patients it costs six and a half thousand pounds to treat these patients. The actual cost for our patients um, was, I'm just going to pull this up, inpatient care equated to about ten and a half thousand pounds per patient and uh, there was a two and a half thousand pounds benefit for using domiciliary treatment. So it's actually not far away from those figures. And finding the figures for domiciliary piperacillin tazobactam is very difficult in the UK. We struggle a lot finding those figures from the manufacturer. So very interesting responses, a very interesting report. Let's ask the question, tell me more about the SF36 questionnaire. Let's see if it's an appropriate questionnaire to be using in this cohort of patients. It's widely used to measure health-related quality of life, to assess eight domains of functional health and well-being. Um, it looks like it's a valid validated tool in numerous populations. These are, it looks like it's used a reasonable questionnaire for this study. So very interesting responses, very impressed um, with the responses. Share your thoughts on the responses that it's provided in the comment section below. And if you like this video, subscribe and I will see you in the next one.